Hi, Travis with Splunk here. In this video, I want to do something a little bit different. I'm normally building a dashboard, showing you how to bring in data, customizing those dashboards, and, and whatnot. But today, I want to show you how I piece together all this information, all these different data sources into one view and find out exactly what happened. So what I have pulled up here is IT Service Intelligence. IT Service Intelligence, or ITSI for short, is a premium product that you can, you'll have to purchase a separate license for. I have another video where I go into upgrading IT Service, not IT, IT Essentials work to IT Service Intelligence. Now, once you get ITSI up and running, you can start building out services and key performance indicators to help you identify where the problem could be in your environment. So here I have my home lab pulled up and I have a lot of red, which is bad, and I have a lot of green. But I've got the you know the important pieces for myself, my Windows environment, my Linux servers, Kubernetes, firewall, and I've been playing around with the sensor data. Now I'll go into videos. I plan to go in in more detail of IT service intelligence and how I've set some of this up. But what I want to point out is if we look at the firewall and then there's ports and then there's LAN and WAN. So there's two ports that are for my internet connection coming in and then there's my LAN port. Now all I've done, if I click on port three, because it's red and that's where I'm going to go, I mean, all I have done here is taken the search that you've seen in another video where I bring in SNMP data and I do my calculation, that Delta command, and figure out how much data is being downloaded. Now, I've since I was playing around with this, I've realized that I may need to adjust the wording on this dashboard. Because if I'm looking at my WAN ports, the in and out is correct. The data coming into the WAN, into my network, and then out to the devices in my house. Now, I know that port three is red, and I know that's wired directly to one computer in my house. However, when I click on port three, it's kind of misleading because it says out, like maybe I'm uploading but it's actually reversed. And that's where I need to go through and readjust this dashboard. To be more of a, the WAN is sending it out to this port. So it's actually coming down into the port. I've actually made those changes. When I saw that, I made the change over here for my key performance indicator, which is just a Splunk search that runs every so often, every five minutes. I think I have it on this one here and looking for the average that past five minutes. But I've, you know, renamed it here, the, the KPI name, so it kind of represents more of what's going on. I'm downloading, and my download usage has increased, and we can see that here. Uh, I can even, from ITSI, click on Deep Dive and jump into just those key performance indicators, those Splunk searches that are tied to the port three service, as I call it, and get an idea of when everything started to happen. I can you know, really zoom in to that timestamp. And if I wanted to, I can go and open this search and start playing with the data. If I need to add uh, other you know, KPIs, so if I wanna come up here and say, you know, WAN, if I want, you know, my WAN, if I want that service health score also be in here, I can do that. But I don't want to go too much into how to configure and everything inside of ITSI. I want to go more into how can I stitch or how can I figure out using the other dashboards I've built. I've got an indicator that something's going on. What is it? I mean, that's the, the real question here. What is going on? So there is the SNMP. I'm using those, that information. Another thing I can do, I said I wasn't going to go keep an ITSI, but another thing I could have done, and I have an episode and alerting, 
and it's at the very top here alerts and episodes and what you can do with that is create an alert and i have one for my wan ports if i go back to the service analyzer i have one for my wan ports i'm going to go create those and maybe that's what i'll do for a video to show you how i enable uh, alerting on these but i have one enabled here for wan and it's alerting on port one if i go back to episode review i have port one you know inbound usage the severity change and that's all it is if a severity changes from normal to anything else it's going to give me an alert i've got a bunch of alerts in here even for just port here uh now what can i do with this i mean i can assign this to someone i can take action so if i wanted to send this over to service now or something else uh send it to our orchestration automation platform go run you know playbook there's a lot of things that we can do not going to go into that but there is a lot of good information that you can have here i'm also going to play around with uh, instructions how do i you know, provide instructions maybe i have something here that says hey go to this dashboard and review this data and this is what you're looking for so what dashboard what i saw Port three, I can go and look at the time frame and figure out because of that deep dive, which I've already closed, but I can go see the time frame. I put it on last four hours. I click submit, which you've seen this a uh, couple videos on this NetFlow activity view. I already knew which computer it was. What if I didn't know what computer it was? Well, I can come in here and quickly identify which computer downloading or was more active than all of my other ones so i did a you know i clicked on it of course and then had this come up and then i was looking at the ip addresses here i did a who is on those ip addresses part of the toolkit that's in the background i've done video on how to do this if you haven't make sure to check out some of my other videos but i was you know curious who this was i didn't really and maybe I'm just missing it, but I didn't really see something that told me where this data is. And you know, maybe that's something I can do is create a lookup sheet to say, hey, if you see this IP range or something, it's usually this. So a new dashboard that I haven't shown you is when Sysmon. So here I've already, and what I'll do is I'm gonna reload this dashboard, do that. Because when I saw it, I mean, uh, let me, did not reload it like I wanted it to. So I'm just gonna submit. When you first, when I first load this up, it has a, a wild card in here to catch everything. So I can see all of the executables that are running on all of my Windows devices. You know, I've even created, and if you're interested in it, maybe I'll do a video on this where I've, uh, I was troubleshooting or just monitoring the GPU temperatures using the NVIDIA software that's already on my computer. So I was having a problem with the game that getting crashes and I was wondering if my GPU was overheating, which it's not, but uh, I have different executables running through all the different devices. With Windows Sysmon data, you can do that. If you want more information about like how I built this dashboard, or how I got Windows Sysmon up and running. There is a site called Ghost Splunk. I have the, you know, Ghost Splunk and find me. It's Ghost Splunk author T Hall. So Ghost Splunk is an awesome site. A bunch of dashboards, searches that people from the community have put up. This is not a Splunk owned site. This is a community driven site, but I've got some other dashboards, which I've, I've went over Ghost Splunk before, but if you've not seen any of my other videos and never heard of it, this is why I'm telling you now. Anyway, I do have how I go in here and what information I got links to information to help me get Splunk, uh, looking at that Microsoft Sysmon data. Now, if you have something like Tanium or some other a data source, uh, yeah, carbon black, whatever, bring in executables, great, use that. 
Now, what I did here, since I know what computer it is, if I go back to my NetFlow data, I mean, I know what computer it is. I mean, it's sitting right here. I, I'm literally feet away from the router, firewall, security device. Uh, I'm, I'm within arms, not arms reach, but I'm pretty close to it. But anyway, I know what the device is. I'm actually going to look at just that one computer, which this is it. I'm going to click submit. So now I'm going to get all the executables that are running and I put it on last six hours. I can specify that time range and see what executables are running on that computer. If I wanted to, I can click on certain ones and get more information. Another thing I could do is maybe put a keyword in here. Down star. Was that computer downloading something? Was it uploading? You know, fail. If I want to see errors, you know, anything. But I want to do a download. I want to see if there's any data coming in. I'm going to hit submit. And now it's going to show me any computer that has a keyword down star. I could have put download, downloading, but if you just put down star, you're going to catch all of those. If you would like to see the search, let me show you that. It's very simple. I'm just doing an index equals sysmon. I have my source right there for sysmon. That text box here, filter the dashboard. That text box, all it did was take whatever I'm typing in here and putting it right into the search right here. Now I do have other, um, I can all processes include processes. So I do have other wild cards in there for the search. And then I say not. If I want to exclude certain things that I know that are just always going to show up and I don't want to see it. I don't have the CSV actually built, but I have it there. And then I just do my stats count and then start looking at the data and changing out the fields. Another thing I do with this dashboard, um, and let me click on this process because it's Steam, which know how many, you know, I, I guess to say there's a lot of people that know what Steam is that's watching this, but yeah, this is where the kid, everybody in every computer in this house has Steam on it to download new games, existing games, play them and whatnot. I should, I'm not going to go explain Steam for you, but here we can see that Steam was downloading, and I have the file name and the executable path, which makes sense because Marvel Rivals had a update recently, and my one computer had an updated to the newest version over the weekend, so that decided to, I don't know, her settings on her computer, you know, when it decided to actually go into an download and you can see right here downloading the uh binaries and the executable and whatnot uh, this uh by the way when i click on process here it actually puts that down into a, a field selection box this field selection box i literally include everything and it's not cooperating up maybe there we go but it, it includes all the fields that are possible uh, there's a lot of fields that could be in certain things that i click on that are not in other things what i've done here or because it may come up if i i can find an example it ain't going to be that be good it may take me way too long to find an example of a value not being present. But if I am, I'm gonna click edit. If I look at the, and I wanna go this search, yes. I do have a fill no, fill null in here. So whatever I click on for the field, which I have field right here, field two, whatever fields I click on, I pass those fields. And then I have a, you know, the way I have the search structured and right here, I mean, I've picked my default ones and there's the token field too. So if I go back to this search, 
you can see that I have stats count by field. So it's whatever I click on, it's going to put it out there. Uh, and then my fill null actually puts the field there as well. So whatever fields that I am putting in my search will also be in a fill null. So I never have a null value. I'm always bringing that information back. That's just like a, a safeguard that I put in place for myself. Anyway, I feel confident that I understand what happened and why this turned red just by reviewing the data episode, NetFlow data, and correlating all of that. You know, I can go look and see if literally touch the computer and go see if that um, game has updated and it's ready to be played. She hasn't, you know, it's the one computer that we put it on there, but she doesn't play the game. But here, I, I I hope that this was kind of neat and a different idea of showing you all the different dashboards that I have in place. You know, I can actually click on some of the other ones. Maybe there was another one that, because it doesn't actually show me uh, how much data was downloaded in the Syspawn data, but it just shows me the executables that are running. There we go. So I clicked on this other updater for Google, and we can see that there is an old values for the field name, a file name and file path. But I can see, you know, my command line and what was being ran right here. A lot of good information. If you want this dashboard, if you want to bring in Sysmon data, definitely go check out Go Splunk and check out, make sure to have this in the links below. And as always, hopefully this was helpful to show you how to piece all the different data sets together. I promise I'm going to get to a point where I'll start building out IT service intelligence and showing you how I got to this point in my home environment. Right now, if I come back here and I can say presets and then I can say last four hours, it actually is healthy at the moment to where my LAN and my ports are no longer red. And that's, I've got adaptive thresholding to tell me when something is abnormal. I did have some events, which was just a disconnect between my access point and the network device. Oh, and then my Kubernetes stuff. Uh, I mean, yeah, if I look at my host, I've, one of these days I'm going to give it more space because I'm using too much uh, swap on this device. With that, I am going to close out this video and tell you happy spelunking. See you on the next one.